Hello guys and girls, Roger back with another video. In this video, we are going to learn about Kubernetes security best practices. So these best practices could be difficult to remember. So I'm also gonna tell you a technique uh, on how to remember the best practices. I'm also gonna give you some of the interview tips. Uh, so for some of these uh, best practices, uh, you can expect that the interviewer will ask some deep dive questions so I'm going to point those out as well. All right, with that being said, let's get started. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Raj. I'm a senior specialist architect for serverless and containers working at AWS. Before joining AWS, I was a distinguished cloud architect at Verizon. And before that, I used to work in mainframe at JP Morgan Chase. I'm also a published Udemy and Pluralsight author, and I have multiple courses on Kubernetes, serverless, infrastructure as code, etc. So let's first take a look for the end-to-end -end flow for Kubernetes. Uh, so you, the almighty developer, has some code and a Docker file. And using this Docker file, you Dockerize your code and you save that container image into a container image repository. So at this point, you are ready to deploy that container image as a container in a Kubernetes cluster. But not so fast. Someone needs to create the cluster for you. So generally that would be infrastructure folks. So they will create the cluster, but they will say, I am watching you guys in case you guys do something bad. I know how it works. I used to work both as a developer as well as the infrastructure. So these infrastructure folks spin up the Kubernetes cluster and the worker node of the cluster uh, will be running on some sort of virtual machine such as Amazon EC2. So once this cluster is up and running, your container will run in this cluster inside a pod. So for security best practices, we will divide this whole end-to-end -end flow in four different areas. So this is how you remember it. So the first phase is the development phase where you code and dockerize your application. The next phase will be infrastructure phase where the infrastructure guys or girls spin up the cluster for you and select the Amazon EC2, etc. And the next phase is the application phase where the application folks deploy the containers and run the containers. And the last phase will be where the infrastructure folks are saying, I am watching you. So it will be detection phase. So remember this logical flow, a development phase, then the infrastructure phase, then the application phase, and then the detection phase. So the security best practices I have divided into these four different categories. So as long as you can remember these four phases, uh, you can mention the related best practices. All right, so let's start with the development phase security best practices. So you should always create minimal images for your application. You remove unnecessary softwares and packages from your container image uh, to reduce the size. And as you take unnecessary packages, uh, it reduces the attack surface. And another technique to create a minimal image is using multi-stage builds to reduce size. So let's take a brief look at this multi-stage build. So generally each line in your Docker file creates a layer in the Docker image. So it starts with the layer one as the base image and then each command adds uh, a layer on top of each other. But if you think about it, let's say um, you have a code and the dependencies. So you compile all that stuff and you create a executable. So you really don't need your code and dependencies in the container image, right? Because the executable is sufficient enough to run your application. So using multi-stage build, you can create a lightweight container just with the executable. So a sample Docker file for multi-stage build will be like this. So as you can see, uh, instead of just saying from Golang, as usual, we are saying as builder. As soon as you put as and a name, that means that's a stage. Uh, so in this stage, 
we are uh, compiling all the stuff and creating the executable and then you can see there is a gap and we have this from alpine colon latest so in the next stage uh, we are grabbing the alpine base image instead of the golang base image because alpine is very lightweight and then we are simply copying the compiled code from builder stage to this stage and uh, when you run multi-stage docker file only the last stage is responsible for creating the final container image so this is how we create a multi-stage minimal container images all right going back to our best practices uh, next security best practice is run static scan on the container image for vulnerabilities so keep some uh, scanning tool names handy uh, for interview for example uh, if you are using uh, ecr which is amazon's container repository it uses clear free of charge or you can use twistlock aquasec etc also next best practice is use private repository instead public all right moving on to the next phase which is uh, infrastructure phase uh, where the infrastructure team creates the cluster so the first infrastructure phase security best practice is to use hardened amis uh, don't get confused between ami and the container image uh, so when you run your worker plane on the virtual machine such as Amazon uh, EC2, you need an application machine image uh, for that EC2. And then your container image uh, runs on that worker node, right? So when you say AMI, this is the AMI or the image that your EC2 needs to use. Uh, so how do you use a hardened AMI? Same concept as container as well. Uh, you remove unnecessary packages uh, from the AMI to make it more hardened as you reduce the number of packages, uh, it reduces the attack surface. So you can get a question like, uh, uh, where can you get these hardened AMIs? So you can of course make it yourself, but this could be a little tedious. Uh, you can also get hardened AMI out of the box from AWS Marketplace, but you do have to pay a little bit of fee for this. Uh, next infrastructure phase security best practice is uh, run latest Kubernetes version as Kubernetes moves to newer versions, it actually adds lots of security patches. Uh, so always make sure your cluster is up to date. The next, and this one is important, make sure you mention this in your interview, uh, run QBench for CIS benchmark periodically. Uh, so CIS benchmark has the list of CVEs or vulnerabilities uh, for particular uh, AMIs based on the operating system. Uh, so if you are uh, running, let's say, Amazon Linux 2 or Ubuntu or something, uh, the CIS benchmark will have the vulnerabilities listed. And as new vulnerability comes in, this benchmark will be updated. So this KubeBench is a tool, uh, open source, which you can install uh, on your cluster. It will run as daemon set. And you can run this KubeBench periodically, which will check uh, for the application pods if they are okay as per CIS benchmark. Uh, you can also use Amazon Inspector if you are running on AWS. All right, so the next phase is application phase. So this has the most amount of uh, security best practices. As you can imagine, at the end of the day in the shared responsibility model, uh, a lot of things comes down to the application. Uh, so all right, so let's take a look. So use namespaces to divide the cluster and not only this helps you in the multi-tenancy by separating uh, different applications you can also have separate resource quota uh, for each namespace resource quota specifies how much maximum cpu and memory can this uh, namespace allocate so even in case of security attacks such as DDoS attacks, it is not going to exhaust the CPU and memory of the entire cluster. Uh, only that specific namespace will be impacted and other namespace can work normally. But remember, by default, all pods can talk to each other. So uh, the pods in namespace A can talk to pods in uh, namespace B in the same cluster. So which brings us to the next best practice, which is use network policy to control pod traffic. 
So network policy works in OSI layer 3 and 4, which means it can control traffic uh, by IP address of the pod or port of the pod. And it can also control traffic using label of the pod as well as namespace. Uh, so using network policy and namespace, you can totally segregate traffic uh, for each namespace. Taking a quick look at a network policy manifest file, the kind network policy signifies that this is a manifest for network policy. Under metadata, name is just the name for this network policy, but more importantly, the namespace, namespace-b, and under spec, the pod selector with match label environment colon test signifies that this network policy is implemented for the pods with the label environment colon test within the namespace namespace dash b. Now under ingress under the from statement, we are specifying the clause namespace selector. So this network policy only allowed traffic coming from the pods running in a namespace with a label myspace colon namespace a, which is in this case namespace dash a. And after you deploy this network policy, this pod in namespace b will not accept traffic from any other pod which doesn't match this ingress criteria. So the pods running within namespace C should not be able to communicate with the pods in namespace B. So network policy is becoming quite important and I'm seeing that in more and more interviews it is being asked. So I have a separate video on network policy with a demo on Kubernetes with Calico. I'll give the link up top so please check it out if interested. So the next best practice for application phase is implement RBAC or role-based access control. So this also kind of ties back to Kubernetes version. Uh, if you are beyond Kubernetes version 1.16, uh, you have to use RBAC, uh, but make sure that you utilize RBAC. Like uh, with uh, role-based access control, you can have separate roles for separate groups. So admin can have access to, let's say, uh, create namespace, delete pods, etc. Developer can have uh, specific roles, tester can have specific roles. Uh, so even though it is convenient, do not give admin role to everybody. So create separate roles and apply this um, appropriately. So again, RBAC, super important, both for interview as well as your real world project. So if you don't know what is RBAC and you want to understand it from a basic, uh, so please watch my Kubernetes security video on RBAC and IRSA. I'll give a link up top. So the next best practice is uh, do not allow privileged escalation. And on this best practice, uh, prepare for questions for privilege versus root access. So one big difference is with root, uh, you are still confined to your current container. Uh, you cannot impact other namespaces, other containers. But privilege access allows you to access other containers, other namespaces. So this is a strict no-no. So in your pod manifest file, you should always put a privileged escalation as false so that it's not possible. So we are talking about a lot of best practices but is there a way to declare all this using some sort of policy engine? Yes. Which brings us to the next best practice. Uh, use OPA or open policy agent to enforce restrictions. Uh, so you can do multiple things using this OPA. Uh, using OPA, you can make sure that the container images only comes from approved repository or you can enforce that every namespace should have a label with point of contact, etc. So you might get a question on this that how would you implement OPA or open policy agent? Uh, so you do that by using either a Gatekeeper, which is open source uh, project, or Kaibarno. Gatekeeper is based on a Rego uh, syntax programming language, 
and Kaibarno is based on YAML. So Kaibarno is getting a lot of traction, uh, but keep these two names in mind. All right, now moving on to, I am watching you from the infrastructure group. Uh, so this is the detection phase. So this detection phase security best practice is run dynamic scan on running containers. So you did the static scan on your container image, uh, but maybe uh, after you deployed it, some new vulnerability came on, right? Uh, so, but at this point, you already deployed your container image. So you have to run scan on the running container to find that. So this one is highly recommended as well. Make sure you mention this in your interview. Keep some scanning tool names handy, such as Twistlock, Aquasec, Sneak, etc. The next best practice is enable audit logs. Uh, so your control plane sends the logs uh, for EKS, it sends to uh, CloudWatch. Uh, so make sure you create alarms on some of the suspicious things. You can run insights on the logs, etc. All right, guys and girls. So these are the 10 Kubernetes security best practices that you should implement in your real world application as well as prepare them for your interviews. Uh, let me know if you want to dive deep into some specific uh, security best practices uh, with demo and stuff, happy to do that. Let me know in the comment section. Also, if you found this video helpful, if you learned something new, uh, please subscribe, click that like button, smash it if that's something you are into. Each like really helps uh, YouTube algorithm. It suggests this video to new viewers. This is still a small channel. We are trying to grow. All right, guys and girls, that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.